Joining us now, two frequent guests of Closing Bell, Afria CEO Erwin Simon and Tilray CEO Brendan Kennedy. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us here first on CNBC to talk about this deal. Erwin, how long did it, did it take to come together? Give us the backstory. Uh, good afternoon, Sarah, and good to be on your show again, and good to tell, you know, um, your viewers about Afria and Tilray coming together. Listen, it's an exciting time, and I met Brendan about a year ago. We talked a lot and, you know, trying to figure this out, so it was not a deal that happened in a week. And, you know, with the consolidation in any industry, what Brendan and I had to figure out, what's the right thing for our shareholders, what's the right thing for our consumers, and what's the right way to go about this in regards to the surviving company? Who would be CEO and chairman? What would the board be? And ultimately, the big thing is we got to be a growth company. And how do we grow this company well beyond a billion plus dollars? And how do we create market cap of $10 billion for our shareholders? And it took us you know, about six months to figure it out. There were some stops and starts. But the good news is here we are today, and it's announced and it's a very exciting deal for our shareholders, our employees, and our, our users. Markets seem to like it. Erwin, you, to answer some of those questions, you will be the CEO of the company. Brendan, you will be on the board. I'm curious, Brendan, how much of this deal discussion centered around the U.S. and some of the ballot measures we saw pass, the fact that Joe Biden won the election, and increasing hopes that we could see the U.S. continue to open up to legalization of marijuana? Hi, Sarah. Thanks for, ha for having me. Um, you know, I, I think one of the key points is that uh, this combination uh, makes us one of the clear winners in, cl in Canada and gives us a, a clear uh, foundation to be a winner in Europe. Um, and, and as we um, as we feel comfortable about our expansion in those markets, um, you know, next we will look at the U.S. and with uh, Afria's uh, Sweetwater asset and our Manitoba Harvest asset in the U.S. I think we're we're well positioned. Um, certainly, the election um, was positive for uh, both of our companies and the industry as a whole. Um, not only uh, at the national level, but as you mentioned, the state state ballots in uh, Montana, South Dakota, uh, Mississippi, Arizona, not exactly um, uh, blue states, uh, very conservative states that that now have. Republican senators who represent a state where their constituents have legalized cannabis. And so we're, we're optimistic uh, about the opportunities uh, in the future in the U.S. Still, e even though those states, even some of those deep red states are when passed some sort of legal marijuana in some form, a lot of the members of the Senate are, are older and very conservative. If the Senate does stay Republican and, and we don't get legalization of marijuana, does that does that ruin the grand plan? What happens to the vision here? Not at all. First of all, listen, um, consumers are voters and they want to be reelected. 68% of Americans say they want cannabis legalized, okay? You know, in the U.S. today, one in every three residents of the U.S. have some type of legalization, whether it's recreational or whether it's medical. And with that, I think politicians got to listen to what you know, um, the consumers want what, what the voters want, what the citizens want. And you know what, Sarah, we need legalization. Why? Um, we need more tax dollars, you know, to generate in this country here. And why should they allow the illicit market and the drug dealers to continue to sell cannabis into the market where the country, where the states get nothing from it? And, and, and you know what? Even if the U.S. does not legalize, we have the opportunity to grow our share in Canada to a 30% share, which is a major share of that market. Europe will legalize. And between our Portugal facilities and our German facilities, we'll have a big opportunity in Europe with our medical marijuana and recreational. And I'll tell you what, India one day is going to legalize cannabis. China is going to legalize one day cannabis. It's going to become part of the world and a global footprint. So with all we have in our assets, even if the U.S. didn't. And by the way, we do have a $120 million business in the U.S. today with Sweetwater and our Manitoba hemp. So we will have a footprint without even touching the flower in the U.S. market. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.